Hey guys, I hope you and your families are doing well. In this video, I'm going to show you all of my March 2024 swing trades. In total, there were 18 trades, seven of which were break even. So if you exclude the break even trades, that means there are 11 trades in total, nine winners, two losers. So that's an 82% win rate with an average loss of 0.95%. So I'm going to show you the trades. I'm going to talk a little bit about the market as it was pretty choppy. Take a look at the queues, the equal weight, triple queues. You look at IGV, the main software ETF. These are the trades that we're going to be going through. SMC. Lyft, DraftKings, On, URI, PLTR, COF, Meta, Uber, NVIDIA, KKR, Celsius. You're probably familiar with a lot of these names. I'm going to split this video when I'm talking about the actual trade into four main parts. So these are the four components of a trade. Number one, how do you identify a high quality setup as per your criteria? Number two, how do you control the risk to create that asymmetric risk versus reward trading opportunity? Then what I'm going to put a significant emphasis on in this video is the third component of a trade, which is mitigation, risk mitigation. When you're in kind of sideways, choppy markets, I actually think they're the hardest to trade because when the market's just trending down, the type of setups I'm looking for, there's not many. But when you're in this kind of sideways chop like we experienced with the queues in March 2024, that risk mitigation is really, really important. So I'll be talking in great depth about that. And then the fourth part of the trade is optimizing, optimizing profits. And when the market's just chopping around, there's going to be months where you're just not really going to get those kind of stocks and they go out and they trend 30, 40, 50%. It just wasn't really the market environment for that. And that's absolutely fine. So it's about the emotional kind of control and intelligence to realize the type of market that you're in, really focus on the four components of every single trade, identify, control, mitigate, and optimize. Hopefully this video is going to act as a deep dive in terms of my own thinking, what it is I'm looking for when I'm targeting setups and the type of stocks that I'm targeting as well. That leads us on to today's video sponsor, which is Market Surge. Market Surge is who I use to check the fundamentals of a stock. When I'm looking for those TML type stocks with big earnings, big sales, big estimates, global products, institutional sponsorship, then I use Market Search. If you are interested in a discounted trial, then there is a link in the description and the comment section below. Okay, guys, we're going to split this video into four main parts. Part number one is we're going to discuss the market environment and how that affects the type of stocks you're trading and how they may act. So like we saw in March, it was very range bound in terms of the market environment, especially the type of stocks that I look to trade more so, which are kind of your growth orientated stocks. So if the likes of the Qs or the QQQE or IGV is range bound, so it's basically up a bit, down a bit, up a bit, down a bit, it's not really going anywhere. That is going to affect the type of stocks that you are trading. So we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes time. Part two will go through the winning trades. Part three will go through the losing trades. Part four will go through the break even trades. What I'd like to do as we run through those four parts is for you to understand in greater depth my process, how I'm looking to identify, control, mitigate, and optimize my mentality as well, and how I'm trying to position myself in these stocks. So when I take you through the likes of SMCI or some of the other kind of real leaders in the market, the Ubers of the world, the Nvidia's of the world, the Metas of the world, the PLTRs of the world, okay, how I'm trying to position myself. So talking about position sizing, how I then look to free roll and then be risk risk free on a large proportion of my account that I've been able to get in that stock. And then I'm looking to optimize the profits and for a big trend to play out. As I said, the market environment is really going to dictate and affect whether those trends are going to play out, whether the market is going to allow these leading stocks to trend. So let's start talking about it, right? So here you can see the triple Q. So what I've tried to do here is just highlight in pink this this kind of Mar March period. So what do you see? It's pretty range bound, right? It's up a bit, it's down a bit, it's up a bit, it's down a bit, it's up a bit, it's down a bit. I actually think these are some of the hardest markets to trade through. Why? Because you actually have in these range bound choppy markets, you have leaving stocks setting up you have leading stocks setting up and maybe they kind of pop for a couple of days with the market and then they pull back in like this and they set and they pop back up. So emotionally and mentally, it can actually be one of the hardest market environments to be trading through. It can be pretty frustrating, right? You're trying to position yourself as you'll see. I got knocked out of what I think are some key leaders like NVIDIA break even, Uber break even, tried them a couple of times. Uh, Meta, I had that on break even as well, including a loss. So I was trying, like trying to get myself positioned because this is a, at the moment, it's a pretty, pretty constructive bet. You saw we have the PCE report and things like that. Jerome Powell having a speech on the 29th of March, obviously it's closed for the bank holiday, but it can be a bit frustrating, right? You're trying to, you're trying to get position, you're trying to get position, ah, I'm in it, stopped, in it, stopped, in it, stopped, and it's frustrating. Okay, it is, it is what it is. So you are at the mercy of the market for when it is range bound like this. So take a look at the at the QQQE. So this is this is the equal weight. This is kind of what the month felt like to me. Okay, it's kind of up a couple of days, down a couple of days, up a couple of days, down for about a week, up for about a week. Like this. it's it's pretty range bound, right? These are tough markets. So you got to understand. Okay, it's not necessarily you doing things wrong. So this is this is quite a key thing for me. I can be really really hard on myself. I'm my own worst critic, but sometimes. You can be kind of trading, you can be like, I feel like I'm doing everything right, but 
it, it, nothing's really going. Is it? Is it me? Am I doing things wrong? But having the awareness of the market environment that you're trading for as well, and just going, actually, if you're a little bit more rational, a little bit more objective about things, are there going to be some some outliers which just power up higher and they go up 30, 40, 50 percent? They're high ADRs, liquid leaders, things like that, right? Yeah, there may be one or two of those a month, even in a range bound market. But the majority of stocks are going to follow what the general indexes are doing. And you just need to accept that. Okay, you can't kind of affect it in any meaningful way. You're not Fidelity, you're not JP Morgan, you're not a Salt with Sovereign Wealth Fund. It just is what it is. You're going to have months like this where, okay, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. And like software, which have been a leading area, you look at software, okay, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's up. But at these times here, leading stocks are setting up. At these time here, leading stocks, leading stocks are setting up. So was it a little bit frustrating month? Yeah, it was. But this is where you just dial it in and you focus on your process. Okay, what am I trying to do? Every day I'm planning, preparing for the next session as best I can. I'm trying to identify what do I think those leading stocks are. So for me, what I'm looking to do, I split stocks into three categories, okay? I'm looking for your TML type stocks. So that is your Willie O'Neill and your Can Slim leaders. Big earnings, big sales, big estimates, global product, ideally new technology, institutional sponsors sponsorship, yada, 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 right? Category two, that is going to be your momentum leaders. That is stocks that have high 20-day ADR percentages, are very liquid, and have a history of being able to trend and trend very well. Third category is going to be group theme leaders. So what I'm trying to do when I'm doing my screening and my scanning is I'm, tr I'm trying to go, okay, where, where do I see the leadership? What groups are really strong? What themes are really strong? Because sometimes it's a theme more so than a group. So if you think about AI, it's a very strong theme. Now, that doesn't necessarily go into kind of software. It does to an extent, but you can have kind of more stocks under that kind of umbrella and that theme of AI. So I'm trying to go, okay, where is the strength? Where is the leadership? And I categorize stocks into three categories. Stocks can appear in multiple categories. So for me, if we just start here with SMCI, isn't going, okay, TML type stock, big earnings, big sales, big estimates, new revolutionary technology in terms of being AI. I think three of their customers are AMD, Nvidia, and Tesla. Not not a bad three customers, um, right? So for me, tier one TML type stocks. So they now categorize it tier one, tier two, tier three within those three categories. So for me, SMCI, I'm like, okay, tier one TML type stock. Is it a momentum leader type stock? Absolutely, really high ADR percentage, super duper liquid stock trades. Average daily volume is well well over a billion dollars in this stock. When it wants to trend, my word, can this stock trend? Okay, this can trend. So it's tier one in terms of momentum leader. So with tier one true market leader, big earnings, big sales, big estimates, new revolutionary global products, things like that. Okay, momentum leader tier one. And then I'm going, okay, group theme leader. Where would I categorize this? Is it a, is it within the group theme? Well, AI, really really strong theme in the market right now. You think about SMCI, you think about Nvidia's of the world. Okay. So on and so forth. So I'm like tier one TML, tier one momentum leader, tier one group theme leader. Those are the stocks. They don't come around too often. Okay. Those are the stocks. And in the market at any one moment in time, there's a handful. Really, you could probably count them on a single hand. Maybe you can go into two hands. Okay. But there aren't very many of them. So these are the stocks ideally I am trying to position myself in. So I'm planning and preparing as best I can for the next session. Then when that next session comes around, I'm executing my plan to the best of my ability. Okay. So when I think about it, I'm going, okay, number one, first part of a trade, identify. What I've got to do is identify a high quality setup as per my criteria, ideally in the leading stocks in the market, which we just spoke about the categorization. Okay, TML, momentum leader, group theme leader. We're trying to trade, I'm trying to trade certainly those tier one stocks across those different categories. Great. Now what I've got to do is I've got to get it from what I think is a favorable risk versus reward spot. Now I haven't got the initial stop losses, but when but when you see this entry candles, okay, when you see the day that I'm taking it, my stop loss, okay, in the vast majority of cases is placed on the low of the day of the prior session, okay? So then when I'm targeting it through the high of the bar, I primarily use buy stop limit orders <clears throat> as my order entry technique. So my stop loss, if I just put it on here, my stop loss will be here like this. Okay. I'm going to talk about the risk mitigation in a little bit, just trying to give you a feel here. Okay. So what I'm then trying to do is control the risk. Identify those areas on a chart, right? So yeah, absolute leading stock. This is where I want it from. It's setting up as per my criteria. And I think the risk makes sense. Okay. So thinking about the risk makes sense. A lot of that plays into the 20 day ADR percentage. What do I think is probable and realistic given how this stock can move? And then in terms of the controlling risk as well, I'm thinking about it on an individual stock basis. So I'm thinking about the risk here, but I'm also thinking about it more so in totality, holistic approach to the overall account. So when I'm taking the likes of an SMCI, so when I see like, tier one, tier one, tier one across those three categories. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to hit it pretty hard in terms of the initial position sizing. So I'm trying to get 20, 25% of my account in the stock. 
then what I do is I transition into the risk mitigation. So then what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to sell either half or a third of the position, whatever I think is most prudent for that stock and how, how it's kind of playing out. What I'm trying to do is free roll the trade. So this is where I position myself beyond the possibility of defeat. That's a Sun Tzu art of war principle. I would add to that when prudently possible. Now, can you still get gap downs and slippages like you're going to see on COF? Yes, you can. So if COF didn't gap down on me because I'd actually free rolled it, gap down on me, I would have had a 90% win rate, which would have been pretty good in a month where the Qs and basically IGV and QQQE just chopped around. Like, that's pretty darn good. You've been training over two weeks. You know, that is pretty darn good in the month, in the month of, uh, in the month of March. And obviously, I'm showing you everything as well, right? Name another trailer that will do that. But here, okay, what I'm then thinking is, okay, can I hit it pretty hard in terms of like SMCI, NVIDIA, Zubas of the world? Can I get 20, 25% of my account in there, free roll the trade, so then I'm risk-free on the position and I still have 10%, 12.5% circa of my account in the stock now risk-free. As I said, can you get gap downs? Can you get slippage? Of course you can. But that's the point where I'm trying to get myself to. Okay, I'm trying to get these real leading stocks in the market, try and get a significant proportion of my account in them risk-free and then see if the things will trend. So then that goes into the fourth part of the trade, which is optimizing the profits. Now, for me, I'm an intermediate term trend faller. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to ride 10 day, 21 day EMAs if I think appropriate for the stock, maybe keep some back for the 50 day if I think appropriate for the stock. If it starts getting extended from the 10 day, then what I'm looking to do is choke off part or all of the position, depends on the character of the stock. Okay, so lower the day, lower the day, lower the day and choke off the position. Okay, so that's how I'm looking to then trade it. So identify, control, mitigate, and optimize. Okay, so hopefully that's going to kind of set. It's kind of going to set the groundwork for what we're going to talk about a little bit, um, a little bit later on. So SMTI at the time of filming this, still have a position in this one. Again, framework that I have in my head is pop testing action, tight little bar. Maybe I'm thinking about this on Monday. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. That's a tight little inside bar. Volume's really stair step down. That looks pretty interesting, right? We'll see. We'll see what I want to do come Monday, right? Uh, left, let me let me take you through this one again. So a couple of entries in here. So what I'm trying to do in, in terms of my entries, right? I'm looking for continuation type bases to build in the in these leading stocks. Now, ideally, it's a really strong stock. We spoke about TMLs, momentum leaders, group theme leaders as well. So what I'm looking for is if you've watched the blueprint video, if you've watched some of the other things on the channel. I'm looking for continuation type bases to build, but I have an imagination of how they may play out. So I'm looking for cup and handles, flags, wedges, Darvis boxes, triangles, channel wedges, all of those things, right? I'm looking for all of that. And then I'm looking for specific candlesticks. So I call these trigger bars, which are often tight, low volume inside bars, but they don't have to be inside bars, okay? Near one or more key moving averages. So the proximity point, okay? I don't wanna be chasing stocks that are, that are extended from those moving averages. So the proximity point is I want these certain candles six to appear most commonly around 10 day emas or 21 day emas maybe it's a really big base and the 50 is only have a nice cluster in a 10 of 10 21 and um and, and the 50 that's always um that's always nice potentially if it's a leading stock as uh, as well but maybe the market's been through a relatively big consolidation but what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to pick off the entry points within the base okay and then what i've got is an imagination of how the base may play out so if i can i'm looking to add to the position i'm looking to be aggressive i'm trying to push myself okay be aggressive be aggressive be aggressive. If you think it's a leading stocks, again, this categorization point, I think is really important. Okay. Do you think it's a TML type stock? So this is your William O'Neill cancelling criteria. If you do, where would you categorize it within that? Would you say it's yeah, tier one elite? So I'm talking the NVIDIAs of the world, the SMCIs of the world, right? Potentially you've got maybe like an Uber in there as well. Or is it like tier two, tier three? Okay. Then is it a momentum leader type stock? Is it a group theme leader as well? Where would you categorize it? So for me, when I think like tier one, tier one, tier one, or potentially it's like tier one, tier two, tier one, something like that i'm trying to add to position trying to be aggressive so if you look at lift here okay what i did here is i took a position through the shakeout demand tail off the 10 day ema great reaction to the earnings scale look at this great reaction to the earnings two day dollar volume circa 3.3 billion that ain't retail traders doing that that's institutions pulls back down to the 10 day shakeout demand tail low volume love it okay i'm in there and then what i'm doing is i'm selling into the base high so i free roll the trade here i'm not going to show you how i like i'm basically adjusting stop losses to low day and then free rolling it as i teach you in the blueprint video that's on the channel okay and then what i do is i choke off part of the position why because if you look at how lift moves so again we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves i'd encourage you watch this video twice and it'll make a little bit more sense but once you're in a position okay so you're in it you identify it you control it as soon as i'm in the position i've identified and controlled it i'm straight into the risk mitigation phase of the trade right let me get the risk out sun Tzu, art of war principle okay i want to get the risk out of the trade really really important so i'm then 
re-rolling the trade and positioning myself beyond the possibility of defeat. Ideally, then the stock can do no damage to my account equity line, i.e. I can't lose any money on the stock. Can you get gap downs? Can you get slippages? Absolutely you can, but that's the mentality. Let me get myself there. Let me see if I can get 5%, 10%, 15% of my account in this stock risk-free. That's where I'm trying to get to. Okay. Now, then we go into the optimizing profits phase, and you've got to be aware of how do leading stocks tend to act, 10 day, 21 day, potentially the 50 day, but you've got to assess the character of the stock on an individual basis. So when you take a look at Lyft here, how does Lyft like to move to the upside? Okay. You imagine it's kind of breaking out here, here, how it kind of trends, it's obviously an earnings gap down, but here, right, see how quickly it just rolls back over. Okay. If you were buying it here, would the 50 day be a good trailing stop for this a be a good trailing stop for the stock try and say that 10 times quickly now look how much profits you're giving back would would the 21 be any good probably not right it's okay but you're giving back quite a bit would going lower the day lower the day lower the day lower the day on part or all of the position be quite effective yes would the 10 day may be quite effective yes so you want to go back and understand the character of the stock you're trading that then feeds into it i'm also imagining here see how this is running into the base highs double top right but it's running into the base highs that's the logical place for the stock to stall out you have trap buyers who are buying up here you have psychological overhead resistance we have psychological supply as well because traders like me are looking at that and thinking going to run into the base highs yeah i'll take a little bit off there see if i can add to the position on a pullback so what i was then able to do with lift is i added to the position it moved through the shake out demand tail my initial stop loss is placed just there okay so the stock starts going out great i push my stop loss up i free roll the trade and then i take it off here okay it was just rolling back over took some off and then i got stopped out on the final bit for a little little gain but what i like about that trade sure you look at it and you're like well it didn't work out yeah guess what every trade is not going to work out but what was the full process what was the mentality what were the inputs that i was putting in to try and achieve the desired outputs i was pushing myself here i was like right be aggressive add to the position add to the position if this wants to come out and start trending higher i want to get a decent position size on this stock okay so i'm then looking at this thinking yeah i can add this is about trading around the position Okay, then what I did here is just start choking it off, kind of lower the day, lower the day like that, intraday, lower the day. Still got a 16th back for um, lift. Okay, so DraftKings hit. The entry is down here. You get a little shake out to Monte around the 1021. Look how the volume dried up. Good reaction to the earnings. 52 week guys. Okay, so the entry is here on this day here. Now, sometimes this happens. I'll take it and it, it doesn't power out the first day. That's absolutely fine. But I'm still in the third part of the trade. So again, you want to deconstruct it. Think about the components of every trade. For me, this works very well. I have ADHD, I have numerous other things, okay? But for me, I have to kind of I have to compartmentalize things and be, okay, where am I within this trade? What are my objectives? What am I trying to achieve? First and foremost, let's identify a high quality setup. Next, let's control the risk, both on an individual stock basis, but also thinking about it, about the entirety of the portfolio. Great, we're in it, control the risk. Now what we're trying to do is mitigate the risk. Okay, free roll the trade. Great, now we're into the final part of the trade, which is optimizing profits. Okay, what are the selling rules? What are the selling guidelines that we're going to use? So on this day here where I'm selling a half, what I'm doing is pushing my stop loss up. Okay, so I'm pushing my stop loss up. Okay, this is how this active risk mitigation that I teach you in other videos and I teach you in the blueprint video. And we have like, I think 300 hours of educational content on the platform now. Like it's, everything is basically focused on this. Identify, control, mitigate, optimize. Identify, control, mitigate, optimize. It's all I talk about like that. Identify, control, mitigate, optimize. Just go on and on and on about it. It's really important. So as the stock starts getting out, great. Push the stop loss up, starts rolling over. Not interested in that. I want to be in the leaders. Okay, the only good stock is a stock going up, certainly early on in the trade. Once the trade starts playing, now I'll give it I'll give it a little bit more wiggle room kind of pull back try and sit for all those higher lows play it off of moving averages potentially add but what I'm doing here is you'll see I took a quarter off it at 49.09 now this is about understanding the character of the stock okay if you look at DraftKings how does this stock tend to move up see how it u-turns quite hard it u-turns quite hard it u-turns quite hard okay here it kind of u-turns quite hard here it u-turns quite hard so i'm aware of that okay so with part of the position this is the optimizing profits and this is where you create a game plan for how you're going to trade the stock and each stock is unique DraftKings is going to move differently to lift lift is going to move differently to smci onon is going to move differently to DraftKings. so you've got to have a framework that you're operating through but you adapt the framework to the stock that you are trading how do you do that you assess the stock okay before i even enter a position in the stock i'm thinking through the final component of a trade i'm thinking through the optimization okay if i'm in this stock and it starts to move and i free rolled it what are my selling rules what are my selling guidelines what am i looking to do with this stock so what i did with DraftKings here 
Okay, if I drop this onto like the five minute chart, what I'm doing is on the prior day, I moved it up a quarter to the low of the day, didn't get stopped out here. Okay, five minute chart gapped up. So I just push my stop loss up a little bit more and then I get stopped on a quarter of the a quarter of the position. So I'm really happy with how I how I manage that one. Yeah, sure. Then it kind of pulled back down here, still got a quarter left. Maybe it can kind of tighten and bounce. We'll see. We'll see. See what DraftKings wants to do. Bit of a change character, but now I've got a quarter left. We'll see. Uh, on this is the most recent trade that I took. This is on Thursday, the 28th of um, of March. So if I just zoom out, potentially a really, really big base here for on kind of TML type stock. I'm currently wearing a pair of their um, their shoes. I was wearing them earlier on the beach, actually. Um, waterproof ones are pretty good. My wife has a pair, the running shoes, Cloud Cloud Monsters or something like that. She likes them, decent product. So it's always interesting, I think, when you actually use the product, publicly trade a company and you're like, ah, setting up and actually, actually use the product, right? But this one here, what I'm looking at here, Big gap down reverse bar with a shakeout to Martel on the earnings. Powerful move up the next day. So if you zoom in a little bit more granular, what chart pattern do you see? Cup and a handle here. Obviously, pretty deep cup with a big shakeout, but cup and handle. What bar is that? Shakeout to Martel. So again, I can take you through here a little bit more with the risk mitigation, right? So my initial stop loss is placed here at 33.66. So my initial risk on the trade is $1.31 per share. That equates to a 3.75% stop. Off a 20-day ADR of about 4.25% is absolutely fine in, ter in terms of a risk metric. I also feel like on is one of the ones that can kind of power up. Could it go up multiples of that? Yeah, I think so, based on the previous character. Right? Let me just drop this down onto the one-hour chart. Okay. So this is what I'm doing. This is active risk mitigation. Okay. So I can go a little, little bit more in depth here than I did on the prior ones because the chart set up quite nicely. Right. So what I'm doing here is when on starts to get out, again, this is about deconstructing the trade. What are you trying to do? Like, what are you trying to do? I'm very, very clear about what I'm trying to do and how I go about executing that. Really clear, crystal clear in my mind. I know exactly what I'm trying to do. So my entry is through the high of this bar using a buy stop limit order. Could you do an ORB opening range breakout? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's pros and cons of ORBs versus buy stop limit orders and vice versa. For me, I think those two are the best two entry method techniques for pullback buys or breakout trades like this. Okay. So what I'm doing here is my entry is at 34.97 and my initial stop loss is here at 33.66. As the trade starts to get out, okay, as the trade starts to get out, where am I in terms of the four parts of a trade? Where am I, guys? Okay, we've gone from identify to control, okay? We are in the position. What phase of the trade, what component are we now in? Risk mitigation. I'm not thinking about optimizing profits. It, it doesn't even cross my mind. I'm not, I'm not thinking, yeah, stock could go up 20%, 30%, 40%, yeah, maybe. Not thinking about that. All I'm thinking is I have open risk on the trade of I think it was a dollar, dollar thirty one per share. Okay, around about three, three dot seven five percent. All I'm thinking is get that risk out. Free roll this trade. Free roll this trade. I want to lose no money. What did Warren Buffett say? Rule number one, don't lose don't lose money. Rule number two, see rule number one. It's really that straightforward. Like it's that straightforward in my head. So again, the process is built around that about having impeccable defense. Another Sun Tzu, Art of War quote. Invincibility lies in the defense, the possibility of victory in attack. I'll say that again. Invincibility lies in the defense, the possibility of victory in attack. So a lot of you, when you're learning, all you focus on is setups. Set up, set up, set up. So I've got to learn flags, got to learn pedges, got to learn wedge, got to learn different chart patterns but you miss the most important part, which is risk management. Your edge does not come from a chart pattern. Your edge comes from your risk management and your ability to control risk. I think that's really good, so I'm gonna say it again. Your edge does not come from the setup. It doesn't come from the chart pattern. Your edge, or the candlestick, your edge comes from your risk management and your ability to control risk. Your ability to control risk and mitigate risk is what creates the edge. Does that make sense? So here, when on starts getting out, okay, I know for me, my risk management skills are basically second to none. I'm really, really good at this stuff. So I know I can hit this pretty hard. As soon as a prudent opportunity becomes available, I'm gonna be looking to free roll this one. Okay, I'm gonna be looking to free roll this one. So it starts getting out, boom, I move my stop loss up from 33.66 to lower the day there by a cent, 34.71, and then I take off half the position. I've now free rolled the trade. Okay, I've now free rolled the trade. Let me just show you the math on that, okay? So if you think here, okay, let's just do this from here to here. So 23 like this. Let me try and get it to the right level. So if you look at this here, 50, 35, 23, that's going to be 20 at 6 cents. And then if we just pull this one down here like this to 71 like that, what do you notice? Okay, my stop loss, I'm now risking on the remaining half of the position, this 0 0.25, 25 cents. But I've just sold half of the position for a gain of 26 cents. And you might say, well, why'd you do that? Why not? Because it's not part of my process. 
I'm in the risk mitigation stage here, guys. Okay, I'm looking to sell half of the position. Okay, free roll the trade. Could I have waited and sold one third then at two times? Yeah, I could have sold one third at, at two times the stop loss. But that's hindsight. It's 2020. You're going in. The market is closed on Friday. You got the PCE report coming out. Market's been a little bit range bound. I'm going to speed up that risk mitigation. Okay, I want to get the risk out of this thing, and then I want to see if it can trend. The mentality is very, very different. Now I'm into the fourth part of the trade, optimizing profits. So now I just sit, chill out, see if this thing wants to trend high. How high may it go? I don't know. I can look back at how high it's previously gone, get a feel for it. Okay, is it likely to trend up 10%, 20%, 30%? That's kind of what I'm looking at. Makes sense. We're getting somewhere. Hopefully we're getting somewhere. You're all right. Okay, this one here. So tightening around the 1021, nice shake out demand tails here. Great reaction to the uh, to the earnings. A little bit of a slow stock, right? ADR, about 2.4%. Two, about two it's not going to be a particularly big one. But again, I can talk about here in terms of the optimizing profits, right? A little bit. So as this stock starts to get out on this day here on the 19th of March, what I do is just bump the stop loss up. Same as you just saw on ARN, okay? Stock starts getting out. I start raising the stop, looking to free roll it quicker, okay? I, I, I don't care whether I free roll it off the initial stop loss or if I can push my stop loss up. Prudent opportunity comes to push my stop loss up, take the risk out, I'm doing that, okay? The third part of the trade is risk mitigation. It's not optimizing the profits. I'm not trying to be greedy here. I'm, I'm not trying to be greedy and trying to squeeze this for every cent, every dollar I can. It isn't the point of that phase of the trade. The point of the third part of the trade, risk mitigation, is you're trying to, as the name implies, mitigate the risk, right? I'm trying to get the risk out. And then what I'm trying to do is optimize the profits. So let's talk about that a little bit, okay? So the mindset, when I'm targeting a trade, so trigger bars, gap down bars, bars, shake out demand tails, the mindset and mentality that I have is then a framework. So what I'm expecting is pop, test, reversal. So what that looks like on the chart is, let me draw it for you, pop, and I'll show you how this then fits into the framework, test, reversal. So now, Okay, this is what I'm looking for the stock to do. So into the pot, which is basically higher high, higher low, then I'm looking for a higher high and the stock to start trending, okay? So the way this then feeds into things is pop, can I free roll? That's the risk mitigation, okay? Pop, okay, can I free roll into that first pop? Testing action, can I then sit through the testing action? Once I free roll the trade, it becomes much easier to sit through this testing action because I go, I'm oh, break even on the trade. Pulls down here and I get stopped out, I get stopped out, break even. Hey ho, on to the next trade, basically. Just completely unemotional about the thing, right? It's so much easier, I think, when you're break even. Can this then gap down as you're going to see on COF and you come out the other side with a loss? Yeah, it can. COF, I had a loss of 0.2%. It's fine, whatever, okay? But here, pop, test, reversal. Can I now play the stock for a bigger move? So then if you're thinking about the reversal, that's where the optimization of profits comes in. That's where we're thinking about selling rules, selling guidelines. Okay, what are the selling rules? What are the selling guidelines that we're going to use on this stock to help us optimize profits, both in terms of monetary gain, but efficiency of the monetary gain? So that's the time value point. Is it going to be choking off if it starts getting extended from the 10-day EMA? Maybe you see certain candlesticks like this, a big supply shoe extended from the 10 not a good bar to see. So you've got to be adaptable on a day by day basis, but you want to understand the character of the stock. Okay. Is it going to be best to use the 10 day, the 21 day, the 50 day, choke some off, lower the day, lower the day, lower the day with all or part of a of the position with a trailing stop underneath the low of the daily bar? Is it going to be best to use a combination? In my experience, often it's best to use a combination. Okay. You want to have a toolbox that you are assessing the problem with. Okay, you're thinking for it and going, okay, how do I want to do it? You're then developing a Bayesian mentality. What does that mean? It means you're updating your decision making process when new information becomes available. Okay, we have another daily candlestick. What do we want to do? How do we want to manage it? We're in the optimizing profits. What are we trying to do here? Make sense? PLTR. So this one here, I had a small winning trade on it from the 20th of March entry. And then this one here, I got uh, knocked out break even. So again, I can try again here. What am I doing? Okay, first entry, okay, pulls back down towards the 21 day EMA. Beautiful shakeout to Martel there. Close on the high, just undercuts these recent lows. What do you notice about the volume? There's not much. What does that tell me about supply at those levels? There's not that much. Okay, pops here. See that pop? So it pops from my initial stop losses here. I then start raising the stop loss up, mitigate the risk on the trade. So it pops. Okay, can I sit through the testing action? It pulls back in, puts in this really nice bar sitting on the 1021. The volume dries up. So then I'm targeting it, adding to the position. Okay, so I'm pushing myself. I'm trying to add, trying to add to the position, really trying to concentrate what I think are the leading ones. Great reaction to the earnings, by the way. Okay, then through here. Okay, what I'm then trying to do is add to the position. I add to the position. I free roll the trade, move my stop loss up, and then I got knocked break even there, and then I get stopped here on the final part at 20, 23.85 there. 
but that's fine. So one of them is just the marginal winning trade. The other one is break even, but I'm happy with how I was managing that. Remember, I'm a trader. I trade. Okay. This is trading. Okay. There's a plan. Everything is thought through. There is nothing random. Okay. There's nothing. Ah, yeah, it'll be all right. This will happen. That will happen. This will happen. Okay. If you hadn't mitigated the risk like I did, you would have had two losing trades. Okay, here, you pretty much stopped that, okay? Maybe you're still slightly in it. What would you be? Uh, what's the low of that bar there? Low of the bar is 20, uh, 2 cents, but pretty much you, you stopped out on this there. You'd imagine it's probably going to test the 50, right? So if you hadn't have mitigated the risk and managed the trades like I did here, okay, you're out the other side with two losing trades, full stops. So this is the point about invincibility lies in the defense. A risk mitigation is so important. Like, nobody talks about it but it is the most important part of trading. People talk about, ah, yeah, have a stop loss. Well, let's go further. Come on, let's play the game at the highest level. You wanna be good at this, you really, really need to focus. So had you, had I not have done active risk mitigation, just left my stop loss there, well, I'm knocked out of that one, full stop, and then basically knocked out of this one, full stop. Rather than what actually happened is I come out the other side, I have a small little winning trade, and then I'm break even on the other one. Which boat do you wanna be in? Make sense? Like that's the point of active risk mitigation. This happens. This is trading. Okay, you can go and look at some textbooks and some books and all you see is stocks that do that. Go to the moon. They don't do that in the vast majority of cases. Some do and it's great. Oftentimes you're going to have to be, not have to be, but oftentimes the market environment is going to be conducive to letting stocks do that. When you're in a range bound market, guess what? This is going to happen more. You start to see stocks setting up. Okay, yeah, nice shake out demand tail there. Could target it there. Here it's kind of tightening. 1021 could target it there. But if you're in that range bound market, like we're talking about the Qs, QQQE, IGV, and it's just chopping around, what do you think a lot of stocks are going to do? They're going to chop around. So that's why the risk mitigation is even more important in those type of market environments. So let's go on to some losing trades. So COF. Okay, this one here. So what it did is took it through here. So you get decent reaction to the earnings, gap down reverse bar to the 50, gap down reverse bar here. So I'm taking it through here, okay? So I take it through here, initial stop loss is placed here. As it starts moving out, push my stop loss up, lower of the day, free roll the trade like that. And then on this day here, so then I had my stop loss here at 138.15, I believe. And then what happened is it gapped down and the open was there. So it gapped down, so I had slippage. This happens, right? So when we're talking about the free rolling, this happens. So my initial stop loss on the trade would have been circa, this is just circa, okay? My initial stop loss on the trade, would have been circa two and a quarter percent, roughly, okay? Could have been a little bit more, a little bit less, but roughly if you look in through the high there where I got filled, should I do it exactly for you? Uh, 139 and then the low of the bar there is gonna be, I would have been underneath that by a penny from memory, like that. So my initial stop loss is gonna be around about two, around about 2.19%, which actually ringing about, right? So 2.19%. Had I have not done the active risk mitigation, which I just talk about and talk about and talk about and talk about in these videos. Had I have not done that, I would have come out the other side with a loss of 2.19%, which is 10 times the loss I would have taken, that I did take, which was 0.2%. This is the point of active risk, risk mitigation, okay? Do you want to come out the other side with a loss of 2.19% or do you want to come out the other side with a loss a tenth of that in this instance here of 0.2%? Think about the boat. Remember what we were talking about with PLTR. Active risk mitigation is ridiculously important. So, so, so important. Okay. So here happens. Is it irritating? Yeah, it's irritating. And then the market being the market, what does it do? Whoop, we're going to reverse and go high. It's absolutely fine. It's the market. It is what it is. Okay. Did it really set? Maybe, but that's kind of okay. But there's little supply shoots on those bars and there are probably better things to be targeting uh, those days as well. But this happens. Okay. Let me, let me take you through meta. So there's a little bit going on here on um, on Meta. I still got uh, some shares from from ones that I was buying down here off the uh, off the 50 day. I think I should have added through there. Should have added through that shake out to Marto, But it is it is what it is. Um, so this one here, this is from February. This this purple trade. Uh, this one here. So I'm going to take you through this one here. So this is my biggest loss of the month, 1.69%. So again, even in a choppy month, really focusing on controlling the risk. And if you look at the type of stocks I'm trading, they're pretty specific, right? They're pretty specific stocks. Again, when you think about that categorization, TMLs, momentum leaders, group theme leaders, okay? KKR, okay, break-even trade that you're gonna see, real kind of group theme leader in terms of banking and financial related stocks. URI, leader in and of its own right. On, leader, DraftKings, leader, Lyft, leader, SMCI, leader, Uber, leader, Nvidia, leader, Celsius, leader, Meta, leader. 
Okay, so I'm trying these ones. These are the stocks that I like to be positioned in. Okay, much more liquid, good stocks to be trading in my view. So these ones here, this is Meta. Okay, entry at four at four nine nine dot one nine, and then I got stopped at four ninety seventy six for my largest loss of the month of one dot six nine percent. Not too bad, right? Like, okay, biggest losing trade of the month in a pretty choppy market, one dot six nine percent. I'll take that. It's absolutely fine. So again, just trying to really control the risk. So it puts in this tight little inside bar. The volume dries up. So I'm targeting it through the high. Get stopped out as it moves through the left is what it is. Then over here, it puts in this nice shakeout demand tail, 1021. The volume dries up. So what I do is I target it through the high there, push my stop loss up, free roll it there, and then pop. Can I sit through the testing action? It didn't want to kind of test it and reverse. It just moved. It just moved through. It is what it is. These levels that you see here these two red levels I, i've still got a quarter of the um shares i bought down here so just stagger them eighth and an eighth okay just under here underneath the 50 as well see if i can kind of get it off the 50 but don't want to give back too much through that level um but anyway so this is this is the mentality right okay can i get in can i hit it hard can i get like a meta can i get 20 25 of my account in the stock and then free roll the trade and then i'm there risk-free and i've still got like 10 percent, 12 and a half percent of my account risk-free on the trade can you get gap downs can you get slippage yes so then when I'm getting knocked out here, break even, I just go, ah, it's break even, it's fine. But had I have not done the risk mitigation, I'm pretty pretty darn close to getting stopped out with a full stop on this one. Again, pretty tight stop. It was around about 3% or so, just over. But I'm trying to get the risk out. Okay, identify, control, mitigate, optimize. Bar by bar, deliberate practice is such a fantastic way. Like using the trading view, bar by bar replay function. Go and pull up. 25 stocks like do meta from its ipo do uber do nvidia do amds of the world do teslas of the world do smcis of the world like go through them bar by bar really practice and really think about okay identify control mitigate optimize that is how you will really train your skill set so remember trading is a skill set that you are trying to develop you're trying to improve so i always think the market is trying to teach me something What's the market trying to teach me? Okay, March, pretty range bound market, right? But up, but down, but up, but down, but up, but down. What's the market trying to te teach me here? What's the market trying to teach me? It's trying to teach me to improve my risk mitigation, improve my risk management. I think I did pretty well that month in terms of my risk mitigation, in terms of my risk management. Okay, pretty darn good, actually, I think about that. So that's what the market was trying to teach me. Now, it might be that we see in April, the market goes on an absolute tear. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. It's building currently, nice pace. So maybe it trends up, maybe it doesn't. If it does trend up, what's the market trying to teach me? So I'm, I'm never angry at the market. I'm just trying to think, okay, what is the market trying to teach me? How is the market trying to help me right now improve as a trader? That is a useful mindset to be in. What's the market trying to teach me? What, what, it, what is it trying to teach me? What is this stock trying to, trying to teach me? So if the market goes on a tear in April, I don't know, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. We'll find out one day at a time. That's my motto, just one day at a time. But if it does go on a tear, what's it trying to teach me? <clears throat> what was it trying to teach me? Certainly if you see the likes of Uber, NVIDIA, Meta, uh, PLTRs of the world, whatever the leadership may be, setting up and then trending higher from these continuation type bases, what was the market trying to teach me in that instance, in that scenario? Jack, get positioned in the leading stocks, ride the trend. That could be the lesson for April. Okay, am I going to improve my skill set around that? Every day, every week, every month, every year, I should be getting better as a trader. I should be improving my skill set as a trader. So if you can come at it from that standpoint, okay, what's the market trying to teach me here? What were the main lessons from this month? The main lessons from this month is how to control the risk, mitigate the risk in a range-bound choppy market like we experienced in March. And I said, if the market's going to trend up in April, and you're going to get some good runs. What was the market trying to teach you? How to get positioned in the leading stocks, remove the, remove the risk, mitigate the risk from the position, and then ride the trends. That's then what the market was trying to teach you. If then in May, the market is just horrendous, and it's just down, 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 and maybe the queues is down 5%, 10%, something like that, and it's just lower, 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 high, lower, 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 high, lower, 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 high. What was the market trying to teach you? Don't try and force things in a bad market when the market is not conducive to that. The market is always trying to teach you something if you are willing to listen and learn. So Uber hit. So this one here, uh, break even on this trade team to you, but okay, I still got some shares that I had from um, this this trade down here, okay, but Uber, this one here, break even trade, so it starts moving through the high here, so what do I do? I push the stop loss up, push the stop loss up, free roll into that, knocked out break even. This one here, this blue trade here, okay, moves through the high of this tight, tight little bar here, so as it starts getting out, great, push the stop loss up, free roll the trade, knocked out break even. It is what it is. That's active risk mitigation. Then this orange trade here, okay, you get this shakeout to Marte. You had quite a few stocks putting in shakeout to Marte, or certainly like the leadership stocks um, heading in, had then heading into the 20th of March session. So on the 19th, they were putting in some pretty constructive bars. So what do I do here? 
This uh, this 7347, by the way, is from the from the entry that I've still got uh, eighth of the position here that I've got left. Okay, but this one here, what do I do? Well, shake out to Marte inside Barlow volume, great target it through the high there, push the stop loss up. Want to see it go pop? Testing action. It's either going to reverse or I'm going to get stopped out around break even. I get knocked out break even. It's fine. Uber, all it needs to do, maybe it kind of comes down to the 50 and puts in a shake out to Marto, and I can be looking at it around there. And that would also be a confluence of kind of prior levels of support and kind of the low of this gap as well. Okay, it's on the radar. So I, I don't mind trying it a couple of times, three times, four times. Yeah, I don't mind. I'll give it another go. If it sets up as my criteria, I think it's one of the leading stocks. I think it's one of the best stocks I could be targeting heading into session. I'll try it again. It's absolutely fine, right? Have that open minded mentality. Nvidia, okay? So NVIDIA, just to kind of really describe the thought process here. So NVIDIA for me, okay, think about that categorization of stocks. TMLs, momentum leaders, group theme leaders. NVIDIA, tier one TML, tier one momentum leader, tier one group theme leader. So what am I trying to do with NVIDIA? I'm trying to push it really, really, really aggressively, okay? So NVIDIA, what I'm doing is I'm targeting it through the height of this bar here. Okay, let me go and show you. So the initial risk that I would have had on the trade would have been 908.58, circa 2, circa 2, 2.9%, okay? So what I'm trying to do here in NVIDIA is push it. Like I'm trying to get a significant proportion of my account in NVIDIA risk-free. That's the point where I'm trying to get myself to. Significant proportion of my account in leading stocks, tier one, tier one, tier one, risk-free. That's what my process is built around. And then the fourth part of the trade is let them trend, stay out the way basically, and just let the stock do whatever the stock wants to do. Now this is the Bayesian mentality. You never have, so working through the process, identify, control, mitigate, great, we're into the fourth part of the trade, we're into optimization now. You never know whether that stock is gonna go up 5%, 50%, 500%, or if you're gonna get stopped out five minutes later. You may be able to have a realistic idea of, okay, if this stock trends up, what did it do on the last, five breakouts from a similar base to this. What did it do? Did it go up 20% for a close blow? It's 21. Did it go up 40%? Did it go up 60%? Did it only go up 5%? What did it do? You can have kind of a realistic expectation based on the prior history of the stock, so the character of the stock. So that's good, okay? Assessing the character of the stock and thinking, okay, if my initial stop loss is circa 3% on a video, do I realistically think it could go up 10 times that to 30%? Yeah, based on the character of the stock, absolutely it could. I mean, this rally here from this big brace breakout has gone up no close below the 21 day EMA yet, and it's up 84%. So if I'm using the 21 as a trailing stop for NVIDIA, I'm going, well, it is currently up 84%. So therefore, taking sub 3% initial risk on a stock that can go up many, many multiples, that's about 30 times, about 27, 28 times that risk, that's the type of trades I want to be taking, right? So that's how before we even enter a trade, we are thinking about what is the probabilistic and realistic return that this stock could provide. Now with NVIDIA, what happens is I just get stopped out here, break even. Right, because I move my stop loss here and I'm like, go, go, gadget, basically. Come on, NVIDIA, kind of pop, test, trend like this. If it doesn't, that's fine. I'll get stopped out, break even. Maybe it kind of resets around uh, around its 21-day EMA. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. That's fine. But it's pretty tight bar, right? It's going to look interesting for Monday. Maybe. SMCI, NVIDIA, mm, thinking about some things. KKR. So got a couple left. So KKR, this one here, <clears throat> uh, stop break even on, on this one, like small loss, uh, KKR 0.01% was my uh, loss on this um, on this trade. I actually got, I actually messed up the order here and bought it too high. I think I bought it 0.75% above the high of the uh, of the prior day. Should I double check that? I think it was like, yeah, I bought it too high basically. Um, what was the percentage? Yeah, like I was trying to buy it within 0.5% and I bullsed up the order can happen right um so that was a mistake on my part i wanted to buy it tighter uh, i would have got knocked out break even in any event right but what i do here again is i'm patient my stop loss is uh, my stop loss is here so i'm not stopped out on um on this day here because my initial stop loss if i give you a level my initial stop loss is 96.88 from memory and then lower this bar here is 97.02 so i'm not stopped out but got pretty close and then as the stock starts then moving here what i do i take advantage of that so position myself think third part of the trade risk mitigation position myself beyond the possibility of defeat when a prudent opportunity presents stock starts getting out i've been in it for around about four or five days starts getting out bump the stop loss up sell half of the position there and then i get knocked out break even here it's absolutely fine and don't get into the dangerous thinking going well if you didn't use a stop loss and you sat through here and the stock would now be up here and you have again that is very very dangerous thinking indeed 
Now, let me take you through Celsius. So let's go into the active risk mitigation here. So Celsius had, had a very high short interest as, um, well, anything like over like 30%, pushing 40%, that is a high, high short interest in a stock, okay? Certainly when you think it's like TMO type stock, like really interesting product, the market can have a love affair with non, non-alcoholic non beverage companies. You think Coca-Cola in the 80s and 90s, you think Monster Beverage in the early noughties, and now potentially Celsius picking up, picking up that baton and running with it. So we'll see. So for me, TMO type stock, big earnings, big sales, big estimates, potentially a global product, yeah, or big addressable market, so big TAM. So gap down reverse bar on the earnings, gap down, opens pretty much on the low, bounce off the 21, pushes up here, uh, basically a high high type flag um, set up as well, goes up over 100%, right about 106%. So it's kind of tightening in here, right? The volume dries up pretty nicely. So what I do here is I take the entry at 95.05, sell half at 95.35, and then I get stopped out at 92.59 for a loss of 0.09%, which for me, anything under a tenth of 1% is just a break-even trade, both in terms of a win, but also a loss. I just categorize it. It's basically a break-even trade. I had a bit of slippage coming through, which then caused um, caused it kind of slip down a little bit, but a, under a tenth of a percent for me is break-even. But let me let me show you the full process here. I also had, I think, the live coaching session coming up here, right? But let me just show you, right? 15-minute chart, okay? So my initial stop loss is here. Okay, at 90.87, when the stock starts getting out, actually then has a supply shoot. But again, as soon as a prudent opportunity presents itself, I'm a trader. I'm not a long-term holder. I'm a trader. I'm a swing trader. I'm an intermediate-term trend follower who's very clear about what I'm trying to do. Get myself positioned in leading stocks risk-free with a significant proportion of my account and then see if those things want to trend. Celsius has a history of being able to trend. Just because it has a history of being able to trend does not mean that it will trend from this entry may reset in a couple of weeks maybe it does maybe it doesn't maybe there's some better things to be targeting right but this is what i'm trying to do so watch this okay what i do is i push my stop loss up here push my stop loss to low of the breakout attempt day and then i just free roll off of that okay so my free roll targets come come down okay because initially it would have been up here like this right if i just set this to the right level let me see if i can do it uh, da, 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 it's gonna be 9406 but you guys understand okay initially see my free roll targets they're up here you can't even see them on the screen. So what I do is push it up and then look at that purple line come down. Look at that purple line come down. Now my free roll targets come down. So all I am myopically obsessed about, like myopically obsessed, when I get into the third part of the trade, mitigate that risk. As soon as a prudent opportunity presents itself, position myself beyond the possibility of defeat. That's what I'm trying to do. Then I'm trying to sit, pop, test, reversal, see if this thing wants to trend. If it doesn't get knocked out break even, that's absolutely fine. There's always another bus. There's always another trade, okay? So I'll wrap that video up there, guys. Hopefully it was insightful for you to kind of understand the thought process, understand the mentality. I'd really encourage you, think about your own process. Think about it through the lens of number one, identify, number two, control, number three, mitigate, Number four, optimize. What are those selling rules, selling guidelines that you're using in your own trading to optimize the profits, both in terms of monetary gain, but efficiency of the monetary gain. If you're interested in learning more about this, as I said, we've got like 250, 300 hours of educational content on my platform. So if you want to go and check that out, it's over on my website. Thank you very much for all of the support on the channel. I really do appreciate it, especially if you made it all the way to the end of this video. Any questions, leave me a comment down below. I look forward to seeing you in a future video.